welcome to our main discussion of the day. Now, with food crisis trailing many parts of Nigeria, there are calls from both government and private individuals to help mitigate the effects of food crisis, especially in rural areas where people can't go to farms due to insecurity and therefore suffering from malnutrition and uh, other vices. We're now being joined by Mr. John Ed Idoko, who will be speaking to us on some of these issues and how to stay healthy amidst uh, the daunting food crisis that we are being faced with as a nation. You're very much welcome, sir. Thank you, but I'm not John Idoko. Okay. Okay, well, well, let's uh, quickly set the ball rolling. I apologize, I must have had a mix of the name. Uh, Dr. Mezie Okolo, uh, who is a pharmacist and also a water advocate. Well, I believe um, in line with food, water is also an essential um, commodity for living. Yes, it is. Well, well firstly, um, let me get your take on how, what you think about uh, the scarcity of water in most rural parts of the country. It's something that we all know in as much as in urban cities we get to find water easily there's the water board and and everybody gets water even if you're not getting water from water board you could get water from truck pushers and all but there are rural communities where people have to dig holes to be able to access water and they dig holes they wait for the water to spring up they sieve it it's just a whole strenuous process let me get your take on that well thank you for that question you know that um Water is a necessity for life, whether in the urban or in the rural community. Now, we would assume that most of our agricultural activities happen in the rural communities. So, in, in that sense, you could say that if we are having scarcity of water, and now not just water, but also quality water, that could now have um, effect on the, out, the output the, and the produce from our agricultural activities. And so even though the quality of water is important to everybody, whether in the urban or in the rural, I think that, that um, when we have um, poor quality water, uh, it, affects, it affects life, but it also affects productivity, it affects human health, it affects, it has different, different effects from both the agricultural perspective, educational perspective, health perspective, um, I mean, in, in our GDP generally, yes. Well, water is quite essential to live in. Um, that is an already established fact. Mm -hmm. And uh, if, if you take a very closer look at it, relating it to farmlands, yes. people need proper irrigation to be able to farm, especially for food crops like rice and the rest. Mm -hmm. And in the northern part of the country, well, except for recently that there has been a lot of flooding, but mainly the first half and a little bit into the second half, uh, the first quarter and into the se second quarter of the year, we saw drought in most northern states. They were praying for rain. In fact, prayers were made, public prayers were made, calls were made, and you know, people were quite suffering. They couldn't go to their farms. Crops were dying and all of that. How can we proffer a more viable solution? I know rainwater is a natural thing, but how can we provide better organized irrigation for some of these farmers who are in rural communities to be able to farm properly and not face issues of droughts? Okay, so there, there has to be a public-private partnership in in taking care of those kind of basic necessities like water, yes. especially whether, uh, especially in those um, um, farm areas, and so I think that the government has to be in more intentional, yes. but the private individuals also have the communities have to also be involved. We can't wait for any any arm of government or even any single uh, the private individuals alone or the community alone to do this. Because it, it, at the end of the day, it affects our, our productivity as yes. a people, it affects health as a people, it affects uh, job opportunities as people, it affects food security. So, so quality water, the provision of quality water affects every facet of our, of our, of our, of our being, yes. whether we like it or not. 
And so nobody can say, no, it's not. Oh, he's talking about health. I'm not in the health. No, I'm talking about ugly, not in ugly. He's talking about it. It affects every area. And so every, there has to be a, a, an intentional collaboration of, of the different sectors to be able to guarantee that water is available and much more that quality water is available. No country that has achieved food security uh, sufficiency relies on just rain. No. You have to be intentional. In fact, irrigation is, 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 is the way to go. Yeah. But then the quality of the water that you use to irrigate the farms is also important. And so, and so I, I believe that uh, beyond access to water, there is a need for us to go the extra mile of guaranteeing the quality of the water. Uh, because, because the contaminants in the water can contaminate the food, can contaminate the farms, and then, and then you can see um, uh, a lot of issues. For example, let me, let me, let me give you an example. Yes. There are some certain, certain areas in Yobe State, in some northern part of Yobe, of, of Yobe State, that are having serious issues with chronic kidney disease of unknown etiology. And this is a, an ongoing current issue as I speak to you. Now, now do, you, do you think that perhaps this could be related to the uh, cleanliness or lack of it thereof, of the water that is being used in the farms or the water that they get access to in terms of drinking? Maybe all of those. Because the reality is, even though as we speak, uh, it has not really been established exactly where the cost is coming from. Yes. But we know, and the data evidence suggests, that it must be something in their food, it must be something in their water, it must be something in their environment. It, it, it must be. Because otherwise, how can you explain that five local governments are so affected? In the area called uh, like Bade is one of the local governments. Yes, the, there's a place called Gashua somewhere in, in Bade local government. People are, as we speak now, people are, are dying of chronic kidney disease of unknown etiology. And so it must be something about the, about some contaminant somewhere. And, I, and I, I assure you, by the time we look deep down into it, it must be in their food. It must be in their water, it must be in, in their farms, it must be in something that, that goes into their system. Well, well, we have sort of established um, the possible cause of some of these kidney diseases found in places like northern Yobe states now. Let's come back to rural um, urban settlements. Even in like the Yobe state capital, Abuja here where we are in Lagos, urban cities where people can access maybe sachet water, what we know as pure water, and uh, bottled water as well. Most times, there isn't really proper checks in terms of how safe these waters that are being produced and sold to the public, you know, are. And sometimes you find people saying, oh, after they drank pure water, they suddenly developed typhoid or they fell sick and all of that. Are there modalities to put these people in check? Because it, it seems like people just set up a factory dig up a borehole, buy a machine, and package water to sell. Yeah. That's another big <laughs> issue. I, I, believe, I believe you're laughing because, because you, know, you know that this is a big issue yeah. in the country that has been there for a very, very long time. It is a very serious issue. And I'm not kidding you. Two days ago, I visited some areas in Jahi, just at the back of... Um, Next cash and carry. Yes. One minute away from there. I couldn't even come out from my car to look at where people are drawing water that they drink. Now there is there are a lot a couple of researches that have been published in Nigeria, in East in um, Enugu, in Ebony, in Lagos, showing that the level of lead in our drinking water is higher than WHO standards. Now, we all know that a lot of people that produce and pack and, and distribute and sell water, because the barrier to entry is low. Yes. People package something and label it NAVDAC, with NAVDAC number, and we are drinking. Yeah, I got interested in water because in the capital city of my own state, my friend, when I came into Nigeria in 2021, my friend wouldn't let me drink a bottled water because he said we use this water to wash hands. I'm talking about the capital city. 
And so when you look at it a, a, around, you look, I have enough evidence to show that this is a very serious epidemic going on. But if you also look at it from another angle, it, okay. it, it appears to be a very lucrative business in urban cities. Everybody drinks water. Yes. People go about their daily activities. Laborers on site work extremely hard in the heat. They need water to drink. Yes. People in offices need water to drink. Yes. You're driving by. Vendors are selling water by the roadside. You buy a bottle of water and drink. Yes. Yet, we are not certain, one, where this packaged water is gotten from yes. or, or produced. Secondly, the NAVDAC numbers that are being imprinted on them, how authentic are they because it appears that people just formulate numbers and throw them on on their products and so, sell. so because of the, the 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 fact that water is everybody's food all of us rely on water every day and every and in in, in, in all of our activities yes i think there is a need for us to for the government to be more intentional in the regulation of water so it is one thing to set standards is another thing to regulate properly. Now, now the NAVDAC, for example, is doing have uh, its bit to be able to to regulate, but the reality is that there are places they cannot reach. So, I, so I I think that there will be there will be some kind of there needs to be some kind of conversation between the government and NAVDAC, or maybe government needs to think about about a, a separate unit. That we focus on regulation of water, different from the rest of the things that NAVDAC does, so that so that there will be proper policing and control of of what is going on within that space. Yes. And there is there's a need also to raise the barrier to entry, so that so that before people are allowed to package water and distribute, that certain standards are are, are, are met. Otherwise, we we see people go behind their, their doors, their houses, and and bottled water and saturate and such them and lather them and, and they are selling yes, and because because and because these things are not um, uh, it's, it's everybody's food kind of people don't have the labs or the opportunity to go start looking and checking unless they hear they can smell it or it, it leaves an aftertaste in their mouth they, they, they assume it is good suspicious of it good otherwise they assume it is good yes. but the reality is even the one that it doesn't smell or doesn't taste may not be good. But, but how much damage does this does uh, that does this do to most people who are unfortunate enough to purchase this contaminated water that are otherwise packaged as pure water is it really pure in the real sense and you are a pharmacist you are in the you know health uh, sector how would you say this has affected people especially with the constant complaints of typhoid fever here and there by individuals all over the place? It is a very serious problem, and I think it's affecting us in every aspect of our daily lives, in our productivity, and uh, in the quality of life that we live. So beyond the regular waterborne diseases that we talk about, cholera, typhoid, even malaria and stuff like that, there, we, we don't even know the other non-communicable aspects of this, uh, this contaminants in the water. For example, I talked about lead earlier. Lead has been shown to, to, to have a lot of effect on blood pressure and cardiovascular health. And there is, there is a very high level of cardiovascular issues within our, our space, That's which right. is also affecting the quality of life and our productivity. Now, in the conference that we just had, with somebody talked about microplastics. Now, that is even a different discussion entirely going on because standards are still being set in that space, even globally. But with, and, and the way and manner we dispose of these plastics and all of those in the environment and stuff, nobody, we, have not, we haven't been able to even quantify what the micro microplastics and the, and, the, and, the, and the health implications of those. Now, there are also other, other, other um, uh, contaminants in water that could have some e some effect on cancers. Now we haven't even quantified all of this. So my point is that if we don't pay attention to the quality of water that we use, both in irrigation, in drinking, in all of our uh, all, all of our uh, even in wash activities, plus also in the industries, all the industries that use water, the quality of the water that they use to make all the stuff that we eat. 
All the contaminants that in them can accumulate over time. And that could, and who knows whether that is, could be the major factor that, that, that accounts for the short life expectancy that we have in Nigeria. Do you know the, the life expectancy of Nigeria at death now? In 50, 56 or 54, I don't know. Don't even know if it has gone below 50 something now. So somebody who is 50 will be expecting to die in four years. That's, that, ridic that's, that's ridiculous. That's, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. So, and, and, and if, if, if these things are not far-fetched. They are in our, in, our, in our environment, they are in our food, they are in our water, they are in the things that we consume. And so, and, and so I think that there is a need for us as a people to be intentional about water. Oh, oh, okay, well, well you, you made a point, there is need for us to be intentional about water. In being intentional about water, if you check the prices of packaged water in the country today, it has skyrocketed. Mm -hmm. A bag of, um, I think, 20 or 24 sachet water uh, right now costs about, about 500, 600. Some could go as high as 1,000 naira. Mm -hmm. A packet of 12 uh, bottled water in a pack costs about 2,000 naira or 3,000 naira. It's becoming too expensive mm -hmm. for people to buy. These are things that people could go and purchase with 50 naira. People could go and purchase an entire pack of bottled water with less than a thousand naira, but mm -hmm. now it is too expensive. Mm -hmm. What can be done about it? Okay, so there are two, there are a couple of ways to look at it. Because number one, the fact that the price of water has increased could be an attraction for for people who do who package it anyhow to come in and make money. And sell cheaply. And, and, and no, even, uh, even, uh, sell it at the, even uh, even if they sell at the level where this, and they month they month profit yes. without paying attention to quality. So that is uh, one angle you can look, can look at it. However, what can be done? So I, that, that's why I think there is a need for a more intense in, and a more intentional regulation of that space. So that, not, not one, the price should be regulated. Yes. Two, the quality much more should be regulated, and so if we if 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 there is increased budget and increased government attention in that space, it will it will it will guarantee that anybody who is going into that space understands the need for quality and maintains quality, or otherwise face the consequence for not. I, I, I mean, I believe I speak for a majority of Nigerians when I ask this question. Why exactly is water becoming more and more expensive? It's not like a commodity that you'd have to produce. You only obtain it either via a borehole or spring water, like you know, most companies, reputable companies, do obtain theirs. So what exactly is making water more and more expensive? Is it the packaging? Is it the water itself? Is it the distribution? I know there are factors, but are these factors enough to make water way out of reach for the common man? No. Um, I don't think the, the factors will, are enough to make water out of reach for the common man. That's number one. Number two, if the cost of purifying water and guaranteeing its quality um, could, be, uh, uh, could be a little high yeah. for people who really want to do it well. But then, like I said, if there be the collaboration and the cooperation between the, um, the private and the public sectors, there are, there, there are different ways around this. One of the things I, I challenge some of my friends in the, in the Nigerian space is this. If you look at how we treat and purify and distribute water, yes. most people use reverse osmosis. It's not cheap. Even if the, the, the people that use, like, let's say, for example, ozone generators, they're not cheap. If, so if we can produce our own ways to treat this water without relying on excessive importation of... Well, 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 for the sake of people who might be watching right now okay. and are not quite familiar with these two ways of water purification that you have mentioned, do you mind giving a breakdown of how these uh, waters are purified in in the two manners you had mentioned. Well, so, so the two ways that, I, that I, I mentioned are not really exclusive by, by, by themselves. So uh, most people who are within the water uh, purification space uh, uh, that use reverse osmosis, which is the most common one, um, have to import, uh, well, uses some kind of membrane. Yes. That membrane is not really cheap. 
Now, I have uh, uh, tried to figure out who can produce them here. And I have challenged some of my friends in the engineering space. Why can't we do something? There has to be a way for us as Africans to come up with some ways to treat and guarantee the quality of our own water without overly relying on importation of membranes or, or UV light or, or, or ozone generators or yes. something like that. But I don't know why we haven't been able to, as a nation, in looking that to, kind to of area. research into that area, in that area. With, with a more sustainable uh, way that can uh, be affordable. Exactly. Yeah. Because, because the way to go is that if we must really achieve quality and if we must also achieve affordability to the common man, then there has to be a way to bring down the cost of purification, of distribution, and uh, of water. And that, I believe, should be through research and development and more budget, and probably then uh, more intense regulation. Now, many calls have been made several times for uh, recycling, you know, re reuse, uh, recycle, and all of that. Terms have been made, advocacies have been made, NGOs have been set up for the sake of, of uh, recycling. But most emphases are on plastics. Mm -hmm. Water can be recycled. Mm -hmm. Why aren't we investing and looking deeply into the recycling of water as a nation? <laughs> well, because I've seen reports, uh -huh. I've seen reports elsewhere of people recycling muddy water mm -hmm. and it becomes out, it comes out purified and clean enough, safe enough for drinking. Exactly. 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 That's why I said if we are deliberate about investment in the water infrastructure, Part of that infrastructure is the mechanism to be able to recycle water. Water should be re recycled at every point, whether it is the one that we are... That, 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 I mean, everything can be recycled. Yes. But we, as a country, we, we can't recycle. We are, not, we are not into recycling. We are not thinking about recycling. So we should, me and you should figure out how to get government to think about recycling because at some point, if we are not recycling stuff, we're going to be having problems and it is because it is the process of their recycling that will be able to address and remove all kinds of contaminants and all those kind of issues so you cannot recycle properly and get quality out of whatever you're recycling without investment in the infrastructure yes and that right now i don't think we have that well, well well the term is the the phrase is reduce reuse recycle mm -hmm. or I, I believe that is the term. Uh, 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 so, so okay, something okay. like that. Mm -hmm. now, now, can the usage of water be reduced in terms of the reduction of wastage? You find taps in most places leaking. Leaking taps, I believe, accounts for a very humongous um, amount of water that is being lost annually globally. And if, if you also look at it, people just turn on their taps and forget it and leave the house or leave whatever... Uh, uh, room they are in. So some of these little, little factors that might appear like they are not really consequential. How much effect are they having to the availability of water now narrowing it down to Nigeria, where every corner you look at, there is a leaking tap somewhere? It, it, I, think, I think it's all about, about ownership. Um, when people understand the need um, for ownership and the cost implications of their activities, they they do they behave differently. Um, so I, as, as we advocate for for water quality, there is need for the people to understand that that they must also conserve what they have, reduce yes. wastage as much as possible, uh, and then the people have to do the much they can do. Certainly, people have to take responsibility for their own part. Government cannot come and, and turn off the tap for you. So, so, and and then of course, uh, at the end of the day, it it, it comes down to on, on, on the people. If you wasted the, the water that you have, then you deal with that, and then you 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 you, you have to go look for something. Something. But because we even guarantee, yes. you know, so, so you, <laughs> you, you, you go down. That isn't really pure. Oh man, that one. Uh, you see, you see, again, because the barrier to entry is low. Yeah. There's the, the, a lot of people don't even uh, don't even consider the pure water. When we're talking, we are worried about the ones in the bottle. So, how much more the such ones? So, it's, it's a serious issue, bro. 
Now, now uh, growing up, I, I believe you remember, um, you, you know, the days of fetching or uh, catching rainwater. Yes. You know, people throw their buckets, throw their basins out in the rain, and they catch rainwater. They store these rainwaters, and somehow it 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 tastes so purified, it tastes so refreshing, and it has so many uses. These days, we don't seem to find people doing that. It's like everybody is more inclined towards the tap, the what the water, water board supplies, and all. Why has this gone out of vogue? I think I think climate change has also come in. Yes. Uh, climate change has has come into 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 play, and also I think that um, technology has also has also come in. Yeah. And now we, now I, I also think that we we know better. We we are, we are, we are kind of asking for more. Um, nobody nobody relies on rainwater anymore. Even I also remember when we used to have all the water bottles used to work. When we were going to school, we stop by and you fetch water by and, and, and you drink and, and it's safe. It, it was good. But um, I don't know. Um, I think I think again a lot of contaminants in the in the in the in the environment, in the atmosphere, in the in the water, and all of those uh, bodies coming. I have been able to uh, kind of broaden the quality. And also, I also feel like our some of our water bottles that used to work back in the day. I don't know if they are still working they're now. Still working because uh, almost almost every new building, any new estate you find these days, they have their own internal source of water generation there's always a borehole dog right next to the house where they just generate water directly from the borehole into the house so water body is also going out of out vogue. of uh, vogue that's right but also even those people that those new uh, estates that are setting up their own their own sometimes i i think that we don't have enough uh, mechanism built into this into the system to monitor and enforce quality yes. in the piping for example so the piping to pipe that water from from source to to you know, through the reticulation to the to different houses, how how do we even guarantee the quality of those piping? Because it, it's possible that you treat the water at source, and then uh, in the in the course of distribution, it could get contaminated. Yes. So at the point of consumption, how do you guarantee that the quality of the water you are consuming is the same as the water one that you pushed out from source? Yes. In an urban issue. So all of those kind of things, I think. I think I think it, it it comes down to 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 us as a people being understanding the implications of these things and the uh, the uh, the accumulation effect of some of these contaminants and and the consequences down the line because the reality is unless you unless you drank water and you had diarrhea or cholera whatever which is immediate. Yes. How about the ones that what that is accumulated in your system that could manifest five years from now? Like like the kidney failures you were talking about, about, about. the state. Exactly. They didn't just start today. But as we speak now, the whole local government, five whole local governments are overtaken by, by, an, epidemic. by the, an epidemic. And everybody is, is calling it chronic kidney disease of unknown. And they probably because. don't even know that. The water that they uh, they have access to could be the reason why they are suffering from this. The reality is that up to now, nobody knows. Nobody has been able to say this is the cause. But, but you are speculating. But, but we are saying that it, 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 there is no, this is the kidney we are talking about. So if it is in the kidney, then it must be something that is going into their body somehow. Yes. It must be in their food. It must be in their water. It must be in the environment. It must be somewhere in the somehow it's somewhere in, 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 the in that environment. <laughs> because how can you just isolate five local governments? Otherwise, you should be everywhere now. It should be everywhere. So, so for the, for the fact that it is it is in these areas, there needs to be proper investment in research to narrow down what that is. Now, if you if you ask a, a young school goer now what are the characteristics of water they will tell you water is colorless water is odorless water is tasteless however it's refreshing all mm -hmm. agreed mm -hmm. however you, you you'd find the advent of things like mineral water sparkling water this water that water how safe are these varieties of water that we see springing up from uh, more or less businessmen who uh, just want to make money well, a, a lot of it is as technology uh, um, evolves, um, people, 
people, some people are business minded, so yeah. they have to take advantage of that. And I get it. Now, also, as we expose ourselves to a lot of a lot of synthetic things, um, we we happen to be a generation that 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 wants to belong, that yeah. wants to do the things to, that are trendy, and so we're deviating from moving away from from nature as um, moving away from organic stuff. Yes. And so all of this could, uh, could lead to a build up of a lot of free radicals in our body. So some of those water that, that um, um, uh, businessmen are taking advantage of uh, may have one or two effects on your health. It may, be, it may be small, but there's huge business opportunities. So it becomes magnified. The effect becomes magnified in the eyes of the business people to, 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 let, to make profit. Yes. However, I think that the real natural spring water, the natural one that is as close as nature as possible, is still the one that everybody needs. Some of these other ones that are, they call alkaline water or something alkaline would be good. Good. Water, could be good mineral in, water. Could be good in certain populations. Yeah. <laughs> but not for everybody. You see what I'm saying? Okay. So, so the, 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 pH, the pH of natural clean water is going to be somewhere between 6.5 and maybe 7.5, 8.5. No more than that. Yeah. That is natural water pH. And so if, it, if the water has to be more than that, then it, it must be for a, a predefined population, not for everybody. That's my that's my take on it. Now, now we've been hammering on water and the effect it has on the firstly environment, secondly people's health, and in general how it drives the economy or pulls it down. Another factor which is closely related to water that most people tend to neglect is food. Nigeria is currently faced with food crisis. There is malnutrition everywhere. People can't afford the basic balanced diet meals that they are supposed to be um, you know taking in to, to be healthy well, what do you think this has uh, costed most nigerians especially the less privileged who maybe just uh, survive on one meal per day a whole lot a whole lot uh, there is hunger in the land yes um the quality of life of people is 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 worse uh, today than it was yesterday um so this whole whole situation is affecting the country um people uh, there is hopelessness people are, are looking for way out um the young people are thinking about the jackpot everybody wants to just everybody run wants away. to run away um so uh, so I, I think that i think i say people and as a country, we need to to sit down and and uh, reorganize and reprioritize, um, because in as much as everybody says that the problem of Africa is leadership, my opinion, and I stand corrected, is that the problem of Africa of leadership in Africa is misplaced priorities. If we can get our priorities right. I think I think Africa is is a land of opportunities. There is no reason for us to rely on importation of food. No. I mean, the government currently has has uh, approved a waiver on taxes for imported food items in the country that is coming from the quarters of the president and also from the quarters of the first lady. She has uh, sort of advised people to go into uh, you know little farming in their homes or in their communities, which she has done by also showing an example of how she was able to cultivate some vegetables in her backyard and all of that. But the main question here is, there is food crisis. Mm -hmm. How can people stay healthy with just rice and vegetables? Uh, that, <laughs> well, the reality is that encouraging people to um, go into agriculture, have, Small scale or large scale is good, but it's, it's probably not enough. Yes, uh, there, there needs to be a lot, a lot more incentive um, and a, a, a conducive environment created for people to do that. Right. You know, so so like for example, now we're talking about about the north that is predominantly 
produce a lot of the fruits and they are praying for water. How about we, we invest in irrigation? and guarantee water all year round. I mean, the North has always been known for dry season farming. Yes. People farm rice in the dry season, they farm rice in the rainy season and all of that. Mm -hmm. However, it, it seems like there's a decline in attention being given to uh, dry season farming, sort of. Because if not, I mean, there wouldn't be a problem with the drought. Yeah, uh, uh, that is number one. Number two, also, we also know that other, 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 other issues have come to play. Uh, the, the, the issues of insecurity, for example, yes. also affects who is willing and ready to go to the farms anymore. Because you don't know what you're going to meet there. Exactly. So, so there needs to be uh, uh, a lot more attention of the government drawn in, making, in creating those kind of enabling environment yes. and providing people uh, with uh, more than enough of what they need to be able to uh, find find um, agriculture and production and food production lucrative by itself, not just for their own uh, family uh, subsistence, but also for uh, the rest of the people. Now, now, now as a pharmacist, uh, uh, Dr. Okolo, uh, what would you say or what would be your advice to individuals who might be a little bit financially constrained in terms of getting the major meals that they need for a balanced diet. How can they get cheap yet well-balanced meals hmm. in this situation? That's difficult to say, but I would say just be, be, be creative. Um, we need a lot of education for people to understand what does a balanced meal look like. Yes. Um, uh, you, see, you see, we grew up hearing about uh, um, three square meal. Uh, somebody said, how can three be square? So, <laughs> you know, so, 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 so now people are not even getting uh, two triangle meal. Now, so, but but, but I, as much as people want to eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner, yes. I think that if people eat good meal, balanced meal, some people not even, I don't even know when the last time I ate three times in a day. But my point is, if you eat good, you may not need to eat that many. But then, of, of course, if you are eating a lot of junks, you're not getting what you need, the, so, the nutrients. Yeah. So, there, there is, there, so, so I, I am sure that the, the way that people can immediately achieve that, government has to, help, has to step in. But on the long run, then there has to be investment and encouragement in the agricultural space um, and this is important i don't know it, it, will, it will have to affect every our, our mindset it has to affect our educational system it will have to uh, our national orientation um, uh, has to be different people have to see to it that they are partners with government and stakeholders in guaranteeing food security and sufficiency in the land, and everybody must, must everyone has must be on deck. We're talking about food. I'm not even we haven't even talked about, for example, as a pharmacist. I'm thinking, how can we? Okay, let me ask you, as a pharmacist, yes. do you know that all the most of our pharmaceutical grade starch, starch that we use in the pharmaceutical industry, are imported from abroad into the country, into Nigeria, and meanwhile we have all kinds of starchy. So, uh, product, uh, so why are we not why are we not exporting pharmaceutical grade starch to the rest of the world? So there are a lot of opportunities for us in in, in Nigeria and all of Africa that we are not leveraging. We, we, we are not utilizing yes. or leveraging on. Yes. Now now let me take you back a little bit to the um, issue of access to farms. Okay. We we know that um, there has been quite a huge hindrance in terms of uh, the one farmer had a clashes secondly banditry in places like the Northwest where people can't access their farms or even if they dare access their farms they get kidnapped the breadwinner of the family is taken away the farmlands are being raised and and all that sort of stuff I know that the government is taking action towards ensuring that peace is restored to that region of the country mm -hmm. but in your opinion what other viable means can people adopt if they can't go to their farms? What else can they do to get food? 
I don't know what else people can do to get food if they can't go to the farms. Uh, but 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 also the people, uh, I, have, I I believe that people. You know there is what you call community policing. Yes. Good. And so if the people uh, work together as a people within their their locality, there has to be a way for them to to navigate around what they have with the uh, with the support of the government. But but uh, uh, when you look at it holistically, the government has to be involved yes. to help the people, support the people to be able to address their own need. There is not going to be one solution for every locality. Certainly. And there's not going to be one one solution for that will I work e everywhere. But in any in any area um, and in every area, there has to be a way for the people to uh, uh, to work with the government yes. to be able to see what works for them. Uh, maybe maybe that would be the way to go. No, no, I, no, no, okay, yeah. I don't, I don't have all the, all the, all the answers. <laughs> well, 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 certainly you do have some of the answers. And uh, you, you have done well in, in, in uh, giving your uh, you know, thoughts to some of these critical national issues surrounding food crisis and water crisis that we are currently being faced with as a nation. Now, in closing, uh, we have just about a minute or two to wrap up. Food and water are two essential things that everybody needs. Mm -hmm. What will be your message to government stakeholders, private stakeholders in the food and water industry to ensure that everybody gets at least a reasonable amount of food to eat and access to clean water for survival? My number one, my advice would be that government should prioritize food and water. Yes. Because if we are hoping to, to have uh, a productive uh, population and a healthy nation, then food and water cannot uh, be overlooked. But beyond food and water, the quality of the food and water is even more important. Uh, because, because it doesn't do anybody good to have access to food and access to water that has no quality. Yes. That is disease right there. That's waterborne disease. That is uh, all kinds of diseases. And so, and so there, is, there is a need to ensure that one food is available, but that the food that is available and the water that is available is of, of the quality that we need for, for healthy and quality living. That my advice. All right, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mizi Okolo. I must uh, say that uh, this has been quite an engaging session, and uh, hopefully every single Nigerian in every nook and cranny of the country gets access to some of these uh, things that you have highlighted. Thank you very much. And like I said, waterborne diseases can be eradicated, but we must join hands All right. and make it happen. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, waterborne diseases can be eradicated if we join hands and wage a war against it. That has been Dr. Mezier Okolo, a pharmacist and a water uh, activist. And he has been speaking to us on ways of accessing quality water for economic growth and poverty eradication. He has also touched on ways of staying healthy amidst the daunting food crisis that we are being faced with as a country. 